our beverage. I didn't yes. even bring it. Okay, we have oh. to walk together. Okay. Come with me. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> pardon us. Pardon us. We had to get the beverage. So uh, we're here today with Juju, a singing, bass playing, piano playing, songwriting, <laughs> just amazing person. She's going to tell us about this piano today. Tyrolean. But, you know, I wanted to chat first. Let these people know who you are, what you do. I was born in San Jose, and my grandma was a singing teacher out there. She would teach everybody in the community. And so when my first, my oldest sister was born, and she could sing, she was like, oh, my God, okay. I'm singing lessons right away, you know. And then my second sister was born. She's like, oh, my God, okay, another singer, you know. And then I was born. My first singing lessons, like, I was literally two years old. I could barely even like stand next to the piano oh, wow. and I'm like hanging on and and then my little sister was born and we were already doing shows around town as like a trio. My little sister was still in diapers and as soon as she could like walk and talk big she was, she was on stage too. It was the four of us and we were like singing, dancing quartet and then we moved down here. We sing on street corners and fairs and festivals and third street a lot. We would sing on city walk and like just busk everywhere. We were called C4 the bomb you know just through performing and busking and stuff people would see us and like give us their number we would just get asked to play actual like legitimate shows and we'd meet different people and then like they introduced us to this person who became like our manager and our agent and then they would introduce us to this and this and we would rehearse next to like destiny's child and like we started like the same rehearsal studio yeah. and everything we ha actually had like mtv approach us and like wanted to do like a reality tv show about us and they followed us around for a week and like documented our whole life and our manager was like oh reality tv shows aren't going to go anywhere like that's not enough money let's just like turn it down and it was before the osborne show it was like <laughs> we had a bunch of different kind of options and like we almost were disney kids everything just kind of started like falling through which is better because we actually ended up all doing our own thing and we didn't really um all have the same style so kind of separated but yeah that's uh, i was originally from up north and we came down here to just be closer to everything so your whole but your whole here. family came down here. everyone like came down, it wasn't yeah. just you and your sisters and then you no. just live <laughs> like, <see> living <laughs> as like these children <laughs> And so this is all singing. So when did you first start playing and what was your first instrument? I started playing piano when I was six. As I kept getting more into piano too, I would tell my teachers, like, I just want to write and like make this song like this and my own like chords and break it down. As I got older, I got really into reading and classical and theory and all that stuff. I started playing bass when we started Blood Moon Howlers and we needed a bassist. I was like, well, I can just learn bass. I actually love bass. I, I play bass more than I play piano now. I still write on the piano. Just tell us when you started writing songs. <laughs> I think probably like seven, wow. seven or eight. And I just, um, not that they were any good, but they were my own. <laughs> tell me about your current music project. So my current music projects are, uh, the Blood Moon Howlers is my main one. And that's with my husband, Matt. I sing, and it's a dual. Uh, lead male and female. How is it that you pay the bills? Well, it's different every day. So we get hired for a lot of like random gigs. Our most like stable um, job we have right now is uh, teaching. I have about 30 students a week. Right now, I'm teaching for about 10 years. Uh, I teach vocals, bass, and piano. I love I love teaching because you know, you're able to give back like our experiences, our knowledge, our, and hopefully inspire and motivate people to you know have music in their lives. And that's just honestly the whole reason I'm doing this. I've been playing music my whole life, and it's such a huge, obviously, part of my life. And it just means so much to me, and it's so special, and it's my form of therapy, and it always has been. I've taught kids from five years old to 85, 90 years old, and it's just such an amazing experience with each person. This is your instrument of choice. Now you play lots of instruments, so this is only one that you have. Mm -hmm. But tell me how you acquired this child and tell me more. Just tell me okay. more about that. It starts when I was six years old. <laughs> my grandma bought my family a um, upright piano and I thought it was so amazing and I loved playing it. My sister took it actually, so she got to take the piano. Somebody's gotta. Yeah. I got like my first little keyboard was like a Yamaha, you know, with the DJ and all the Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm trying to imitate. 
That was my jam. Yeah. So then I got myself my first like real weighted full length keyboard, but it broke. I think that was my last gig with the Sisters and Misters. Um, and we played the House of Blues, and I was like, you know, rocking out. Or that was, Wait, like, you were playing piano. the piano like this? <laughs> Is that we play how piano? You play? I was trying to like stand and play. Yeah. And then high heels, and everything. It was just crazy. But I like stepped on this cord and it just like like broke off into the piano. I bought myself a couple other pianos, but I didn't like them. And I was like, I just don't really like the feel of a keyboard. Like I just want like a piano. So I went on Craigslist and I found this guy named Nico. He buys um, old pianos and like restores them and um, sells them. It wasn't really too sure of the situation because it was on Craigslist, so I was kind of, we just went there to go check it out, and he ended up having this garage in Silver Lake, just full of like beautiful pianos and organs and just all this different, it was so cool. This one was like kind of a new arrival, he like just finished restoring it, and he was a little reluctant to give it to me. <laughs> it sounded beautiful, and it was just so, I just like immediately was like, this is the one, and I played a few, and I was just like, I love this one. Was yeah. it just the sound or was it, it was like the, the feel, feel like the... and just something about it. I don't know the way it looks and I just like, it was kind of like unexplainable. It was just kind of like, I need this one. Sound is just beautiful. It kind of sounds like old Western. Like if you imagine like going into a saloon, mm -hmm. I like, I love those show Westworld. So like yeah. imagine like the piano in there kind of, it kind of sounds like that a little bit. And yeah. like when we've recorded it, it has like creaks in it and it's just kind of has like this vibe and this energy. I mean, it's a hundred years old, so you yeah. know, it's seen a lot, which I think is kind of young for a piano. Yeah. yeah, in this time, but it's yeah. still not young. I mean, yeah. that's the 1910s. When I bought it, Matt and I like to move around a lot and I didn't think about that. Oh. <laughs> so we've been, I've been moving it to every apartment we go to and just paying hundreds of dollars <laughs> Moving it around, it. but I love it. When you play this, do you feels like your mood change? Do you feel so, you know something different every time? What's it feel like when you play the piano? Yeah, my mood definitely changes. I, I feel very connected to the music, and I feel like I play differently on this, like as opposed to like playing on a keyboard. I think about a lot too, like what, like where has this piano been? the story behind it and I'll never know. So I think it might remind me of other pianos I've played in the past growing up and stuff and just that feeling of like a little bit of like this therapeutic kind of like this is my relaxing time and like writing and just kind of having my just time with it. So every time I sit down at a piano, especially this is my piano that I bought and you know so it just has a good feeling with it. You said something interesting where you were saying that you feel something different here between the keyboards. Mm -hmm. What is it about it that makes it different to you? And do you think it's better or is it just different? And there's something about like, you know, really playing and, and like with this one, like if you play loud, it's like things start ringing and you really feel like the energy and it like starts to invoke like more emotion and stuff, you know, and you can really get into the music and the song. It's whatever mood you're in or whatever you're playing, it just kind of like dramatizes it all, you know, or with like a keyboard, it's still kind of digital and it always has that kind of digital sound. Yeah. I still enjoy playing keyboards a lot, but the feel too of like the plastic as opposed to this, I think this one, this one, I know they don't really do ivory anymore yeah they don't but this make it is anymore. ivory yeah so I mean just that feel and and it's it's light like it's kind of lightweight compared to some of like the weighted keyboards I don't know it's just amazing I always uh, feel that when I play digital instruments which I love I think they're super handy mm -hmm. uh, obviously I I like got this tiny little thing I love and, like, that thing though. you can't it, it's really cool mm -hmm. but it's not it's not playing a piano. Mm -hmm. It's a little MIDI instrument, but I always feel like when I'm playing an acoustic, I feel like they play with me and they play back mm -hmm. with me and it's unpredictable in ways and, yeah. and it's just so much more organic. Like when we record it, it has like creaks and like some yeah. of the notes aren't as loud as the other ones and like um, you can't really regulate that. Like you yeah. just don't know if it's going to come out a certain way. So it's a little bit more uneven and not like so perfect. Like as the yeah. digital keyboard, it's like you can control every little part of that, which is also really cool too, but I just yeah. like having the, the like different experience, I guess. Tell me a story around this piano. <laughs> For Matt's 30th birthday party, um, got a little crazy. Was just like, <laughs> and all I know is we found you. cigars like in the upstairs bathroom. Like, I don't even know how that happened. Just, like, <laughs> I think it was Matt, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there was one point when we were all just doing a dance circle, you know, your, your regular typical dance circle in the living room. As um, you do. With blasting music. I think we are all kind of like dancing and copying each other's things, right? And then someone at some point started pounding every time they got to the piano point. I think it might have been me. <laughs> we were in the circle, pound, 
pound, you know, and I just, like, I don't know how many people were doing it, so it just was, and how loud it was, I don't even know. We woke up the next day, and they're, like, literally, like, the, like, whole middle of the piano was, like, stuck down with, like, drink, like, just someone must have been, like, slamming and pour, I don't know what happened. <laughs> when the keys get sticky. I mean, sticky. come on, this thing's 100 years old, you don't know, I mean, like... I'm sure it's had some, some substances in its day. Yeah, I'm sure it's gotten sticky before. Yeah, it's gotten, oh, we fixed it. It's fine. It's How good. did you it's fix it? Did you, did you have someone come in or did you like wipe no, it down? No, we just wiped it down. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I've got to restart the Blood Moon Howlers have a new EP. Is it an EP or LP? LP. It's an LP. So it's a little right. longer it's than a little an EP. Longer. And not quite as long as an album. <laughs> yeah, it goes like this. Single, maxi single, <laughs> EP, LP, album, and then you broke. <laughs> True story. But I released an album. <laughs> I'm going to take this ancient device. <laughs> If you guys know what this is, I want to see a thumbs up, please. This is, <laughs> this is a compact disc. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, they're not qu completely obsolete yet. They took the CD players and stuff out of the computers, but. And cars. But Blood Moon Howlers, they put the O right in the glory hole. Intentionally. <laughs> so that you can be like, hey. So this is called Madman's Ruse. Mm -hmm. This is the forthcoming. LP. So April of this year, 2019, mm -hmm. this is coming out. You already have a single out now though, right? Yeah. On the, on the see LP, Right Through See Right Through You and it's the hangover version. You guys wrote this song for a, an upcoming film called Sugar Babe? Mm -hmm. And that's coming out. We're going to release the video for it in March and I think the film is coming out right around then. Nice. Yeah. So look out for that as well. The back of this actually features the picture of this piano here. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you it's so awesome. much for doing this. I'm so yeah, excited. Thank you. Me. I am I'm a huge, huge fan of Blood Moon Howlers and it's been really, really fun. Yeah. Thanks for spending the whole day with me and for sharing the story about this piano here. We're gonna have Matt come on sometime soon here to talk about any one of those guitars I'm eyeballing in the corner and will not be it's missing only when like I half leave. Of them too. We're gonna come back around. We'll have she's got plenty more too. We got some bases over here. We've got bases to cover. Ah. Ah. Um, I'm really excited because we're going to play something together. We might end up playing more. I don't know. It's going to get wild in here. Yeah. Good. I'm excited. Yeah. Now, let's make music. <laughs>